basically UGL. If it's glutide. a... That's, that stands for underground labs, <laughs> for those who don't know. I'm just glad that if this happens in real life and somebody loses insurance coverage, I'm just glad that they have to stop cold turkey with no taper whatsoever, because you definitely wouldn't want to switch these people to compounded GLP-1 due to the shortage, for sure. Yeah, we don't know the risks. I saw a uh, obesity medicine physician saying that we don't know the risks it could cause cancer. I, you can say that about anything. I, I think this is just some you know, fear mongering. Um, and, and there are exceptions for compounding and do probably know what uh, certifications your compounding pharmacy has and doesn't have. Um, and ideally where they are sourcing their semaglutide from. If it's just yes. some powder from overseas in China, then you, know, you, you can test, but you may not know what impurities are in there. It's basically UGL. If it's glutide. a... That's, that stands for underground labs, <laughs> for those who don't know. Uh, and if it's a FDA approved or FDA inspected facility that is yep. doing the compounding or providing the bulk supply, then you know that could be a good vote of confidence. So hint, most compounding pharmacies that are compounding GLP-1s and peptides, you would not want to use their GLP-1 or peptides. So that's a hint. There are several good ones, and it is another reason why it is very important to trust your healthcare provider. Um, I certainly wouldn't want a mystery syringe, although I guess one benefit of the mystery unmarked pre-filled syringe in your fridge is it'd be very easy to do a rug pull study with them. You can just fill it with saline. Yeah. That, Although you need informed consent, the pesky. It's kind of ethical pesky. detail. Yeah. <laughs> if it seems like we're a little bit uh, sassy about this topic, it's because there, uh, like many things in health, there's this false dichotomy of, um, you know, in, in general, academia or people who own companies that have heavy vested financial interest and bias in using just. Um, you know, uh, brand name medications, and then individuals who have heavy vested financial interest in using generics, or even worse, compounded generics, or even worse, you have to use our couple compounding pharmacies, otherwise we will not prescribe you anything without it, hundreds of dollars of prescription fee. But wait, there's more. There's people that are also recommending semaglutide enters hepatide from research chemical websites. So. You have a continuum of all, worse and worse management. Yeah, um, which is sad, but there is a happy medium in between where you can meet the patient on their individual basis. It kind of irks me that you see all these individuals um, like my hypothetical self that uh, go on this ZEP bound rebound, GLP-1 rebound, just because they want to be more shredded for the summer. Um, and you can't look at someone and tell that they do or don't have insulin resistance or whatnot. And, you know, maybe they have type 1.5 diabetes. So, uh, you know, don't judge someone if they tell you that they're doing something. But at the same time, um, you know, in general, uh, you see all these people getting GLP ones that really are unlikely to benefit from them and that have a lot of risk and harm. And then on the other end, we still have patients that have type two diabetes that cannot get these medications covered. Yeah, your risk reward profile for someone who wants to you know, drop 10 pounds for the summer versus someone who wants to actually control their diabetes and yep. get to an A1C goal, two very different risk reward pictures. In something like, have... yeah, something like 5% of diabetics, I believe it is still single digit. Now I'm sure that number is rising very quickly, mm. but I believe it's still a single digit of individuals with type 2 diabetes that are on GLP-1s. And I, I think that even included SGLT2. That was also a very yeah. low number. But now you have a cash pay uh, SGLT2 that's about $50 a month. Yep. Mark Cuban Pharmacy called Brinzavi. It's not as good as the other ones, but um, I let whoever know that could potentially benefit from that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, now you also have, you know, your gym. I go to Lifetime Fitness and they also have their you know, cookie cutter GLP-1 protocol, which I guess if you happen to be a type two diabetic that goes there that doesn't have insurance coverage or like doesn't go to the doctor, like maybe they could pick up one or two of those people nationwide. But it's it's probably just uh, a bunch of gym goers that want to be a little bit more shredded for the summer. Yeah, uh, race to the bottom, everyone that's trying to sell access to medication. Mm -hmm.